Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by Dinosocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Hello and welcome to Samutsari Conversations with Mimi, a podcast featuring hot topics of interest for both men and women alike. Sometimes here in the show, we feature guests to share their passion and commitment to their professional talents, but some of the time, it's just me having a conversation with you in terms of some of the topics that have been sent to us. Here at Samutsari, we share stories to inspire you, stories from ordinary people who make extra things. And in today's episode, we will talk about the strategies and the tips on managing a very busy home and work life. And this is a follow-up episode on the one that we had recently done with one of my guests, Miss Sydney Villegas from Hawaii. And because her topic generated some interest, there were some um, messages asking me to kind of... Um, repeat some of the strategies or echo some of the strategies based on her experience and kind of condense it into um, another episode so that all the tips are all lined up for you. So today we will talk about those five things or strategies or tips that you can do in order to manage your work and home. Tip number one, work versus home. What does this mean? Work versus home. So nowadays, since most of us work from home because of the current restrictions, and we've been advised to just stay at home and do whatever it is that we're doing at home, there now becomes an issue of whether what you're doing is for the home or what you're doing is for your work so there is that um, blurring or the lack of the distinction between your home life and your work life so if you remember one of the episodes um, with Sydney she said that she really struggled at first but then she organized her day and she came up with a strategy with her family in order to manage her life and it helped her breathe a little bit. It helped her kind of learn how to work in a new dynamic or in a different scenario now where you didn't have to travel to her place of work, which is a school because she is um, a teacher. So going back to work versus home, you have to decide which part of your home is your home office or your work office. So when I say home office, these are the areas where you typically work to do your chores. For example, cooking is definitely in the kitchen. Uh, so the dining room, once you make that your office, it will be difficult for you to distinguish your, your cooking time, your prep time, meal time, uh, and even your eating time. So you have to find a place at home where you can do proper work, a place to do your work, which is nothing to do with your everyday home chores. Okay, so um, in my case, I have two areas where I do my work. So one area in the house where I do it is in the lounge, or maybe a lot of people call it the sala, salas, or the living room. So I have a special spot there where I have a desk uh, with all my files and everything, and a small table where I can do my computing. And then I have another spot space in my bedroom where I have a, 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 a study desk or um, a, a small office desk. Um, so it's a corner where I can quietly do my video editing, do my uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. So I've decided to have two separate and distinct areas where I do my office or work work. But I don't really recommend that you do two unless you're comfortable having two 
And if you have a reason to have two, I have a reason why I need two spaces because there are other members of the family who are doing Zoom meetings as well or Zoom classes because I have kids still doing their studies. Okay, so they're in university and they're doing online learning. So when they're doing their Zoom in the lounge, I have to be um, in another place to do my own Zoom meeting. So that is in the bedroom. So that's my reason. But in your case, you find a place at your house where you can actually have the peace and quiet that you need to do your office work. Okay, so that will be your new home office. Now, allocate days and or times to do housework. So what are this housework, your chores? When do you do the laundry? When do you do the cooking? When do you go out to do your errands? When are you going to go grocery shopping? When are you going to take your children to the doctor? When are you going to um, deliver something or post something to a friend who needs it? So everything has to be allocated now. You cannot mix your work time with your home chores or home time because you will get confused and you will get stressed. And sometimes when you do that, your meetings at work, for example, which you are doing from home, might be uh, affected if you also book to do some home errands on that particular and same time. So because you don't want to double book yourself, your schedule has to really be clear which times and days are allocated for specific tasks. Now, second, we talked about distinguishing work and home because other people are still struggling to distinguish the two, especially if you have younger kids who are constantly um, wanting your attention. Um, I think this second tip will be um, of greater help or of greater use for you. So plan and prepare a schedule. So we talked about scheduling, scheduling, but how do you plan and prepare a schedule? So everybody knows what the schedule is. Everybody knows how to do a schedule, but what I just want to emphasize here, and this is what I learned from my um, episode with Sydney, is create a realistic schedule. So when we talk about create a realistic schedule, we talk about what is practically doable based on your own circumstances. So if you can only do one household chore a day, because you also have to look after kids, you have to look after a family member, you also have to do some other things during the day, then make it, um, you know, less stressful by breaking down a big task into smaller tasks or just focusing on one aspect of the particular task. So if for today you can only fold yesterday's laundry, so don't be too stressed out if you cannot do another batch of laundry. So do little things at a time instead of doing bigger things all at the same time. And I even... Um, heard Sydney say, and I also agree to this, is that I think what we need to do now is to plan immediately what we can do now and a little bit later. Don't plan too much ahead. Before there was this principle or there was this um, kind of accepted um, mode of planning, which is to plan months ahead. But at the current um, you know, situation at the moment, you, it's so difficult to plan ahead because everything is so unpredictable. It's better to plan in the immediate future what you can do now and what you can do a little bit later so that you will feel more in control of what you can do. You can feel more confident that you are accomplishing something. Okay, so that is what we now call as a realistic schedule. Then, this is another tip that I want to share with you guys is negotiate activities with family as they also have their own activities. So, for example, I have um, a, my youngest daughter, she has a part-time casual job in two retail stores that are big here in Australia. So, she has a roster or a schedule for work in one of the stores and another roster and another schedule for another store. So. Of course, she needed me to drive her to and from work at this stage because she's still young and she cannot drive on her own. And I have my own things to do too, my meetings and things like that. So what needs to happen is you have to negotiate with your other family members what they can do on their own, in which case they don't need your help and what they... In, and in those jobs or chores or activities where they need your help, it has to also balance with some of your other things. So if I know that my daughter has to be picked up in X time 
in one place and I have to be in another place at another Y time, I need to book my other meetings of my own work in the in-betweens, okay? In the times where I don't have to physically get out of the house and travel to meet my daughter. I think that's how we can do it. And besides, everybody knows that working from home has a different set of structures now. It's not the rigid structure like what you do when you are physically in an office where the meetings are really, really bang on, sometimes back to back that you barely have the time to have lunch or take a walk. But right now, what is competing for your time is the combination of your actual work plus your home life plus looking after other members of the family. So again, like I said, it's the negotiation part of it that will help you manage or juggle everything that you need to do. So number three, tip number three is to communicate effectively. Okay, communicate what? Communicate your um, wants and your needs. Communicate your wants and your needs. What what does this mean? What are your wants and what are your needs? So let me just give you some examples here. So wants. You want time for yourself. You want quiet time. You want to be away uh, from other people so that you can relax, take a breath of fresh air. Okay, you can stretch out a little bit. I don't know, maybe it's two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. It doesn't matter, 15 minutes. Coffee time, merienda time, me time or just some time to put um, moisturizer on your hands or to put, um, you know, to, to do something different, just to take a break, okay? But to, be a, to take a quick break. So that's your time for yourself. Or if you want an hour to sleep or to nap, then take it. Let other people know that you're not available because that's your me time. And you need um, to also allocate time to accomplish things. So you really want to do that schedule so that you can accomplish what you set yourself to do. So that's the one. My examples for the needs are you need other people's help with the chores. So those things that you can delegate, delegate them. There are some things you can um, completely not do at all. So that will be released from your responsibility. If you need some other person to take over that responsibility, then ask them to take over. You also need patience and understanding from your family. So as busy working moms, juggling life, home life, and your work life, sometimes your patience is really, really short or really, really small. And sometimes um, you, you get triggered easily. So you need to tell them that you're under a lot of stress and you're juggling multiple things. and the, the way they can contribute is also to understand your situation and, and what they can offer to you to release some of that burden that will be highly appreciated, right? And then you might, and I, and I heard this from Sydney, the other tip is find your support group or find a support network outside of your family. So who are the support networks? Maybe you have a Bible study group or a prayer group or you have somebody from your church that you can communicate with, although virtually at this time, you have a family member that you really, really trust and you just want to unload to them or share another separate me time with them. Um, you need that to build up your, your own uh, kind of inner strength so you are released from everything else that's going on. If you need that break, Okay, if you need that time to be with other people or if you just need time to do your Facebook message checking or check on your emails or to record a video or go Facebook Live or whatever you this thing you need to do. Um, if, if that support group or network can help you, then it, it helps, um, you know, take your mind off the pressures of your home and work life. So number four, they always say that health is wealth. And Obviously, during these times, you really need to pay attention to your health because the virus that we are dealing with does not discriminate on anyone, rich or poor, young or old, um, super healthy, or even a person with other underlying conditions. You can be uh, a victim of COVID-19. This is like a thief in the night. You don't know when it will pounce on you and you don't know whether you will be the next victim. So like what everybody does, 
you need to pay attention to your health. So I'm not going to talk about eating healthy foods and taking your vitamins and, and all of that because everybody knows that. But what I just wanted to share is try to squeeze in time to pay attention to your health. So for example, nowadays we have e-checkups or you still have the face-to-face -face checkups, but as long as you can practice social distancing, uh, hand sanitizing and all those things, or you can even do phone consults with your medical practitioner, uh, with your family doctor, with your specialist. So there are many ways now of um, attending to your health. The only things that we cannot do at the moment, in which case in, in my family's experience, we cannot do our dental cleaning because that is um, a service that has been shut off for now. And we cannot also get our eyes checked. So all the eye checkups that we have um, previously booked before COVID has also been uh, shut off for the moment. So they're not available as a service. So the services that are available are obviously in relation to your other health, you know, aspects of your health. So if you need to schedule required tests, blood tests, ultrasound, ECG, or if you have follow-up appointments in, for example, my husband has a follow-up appointment with his ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist, and it's still per permitted to do that, please pay attention and attend to these appointments because you don't know whether this could trigger you to become more sick. So if you just leave it like that, um, it might be a cause for unnecessary worry later on. Number two, pay attention to bodily changes and act upon it. So um, for me at the moment, it's my, my back pain, okay? It's my tennis elbows and my arms. So I'm managing it right now with uh, the help of my GP or general practitioner, my medical doctor. I'm also managing aspects of my anxiety and I got this early in the year. So I'm trying my best to really look after my health so that I don't have to worry about it on top of everything else that's going on so if your hands are really dry because you know of using a lot of hand sanitizers like we do here in australia i've decided to buy a big bottle of hand cream so that it doesn't become really really dry and it looks uh, nice when i'm using my hands in my videos and because of my cooking and other um household chores so pay attention to bodily changes and act upon it so if you find yourself having a little mole or having an unusual bump somewhere pay attention to that because that might be a cause of a future worry and you don't want to add that to your list of worries and if you're caring for others look after your health too so if you have an elderly person at home a lola a lolo or a parent who is an older person how can you look after them if you are sick? Who is going to look after them if not yourself? Or let's turn it the other way around. If um, you get sick, you, they might also get sick as a result of whatever it is. For example, you have colds, coughing, and you transmit that to them. They might um, you know, be more immunocompromised and that might lead them to become very, very sick and you do not want that. So again, even if it's nothing about COVID, for as long as you pay attention to your health, then it helps a lot in terms of preventing any unforeseen future medical worries or problems. And then finally, number five, do something differently. So what does that have to do with busy juggling home and work life effectively? Well, to me, this is important because this gives you a break from your work and home life. So this is important because um, when you take a break from your routine, you feel more refreshed. You feel more, um, you feel more refreshed. You feel more ready to tackle the thing that you have um, been doing, which enabled you to necessary or, or which, Sorry, I have to say that again, take two. By doing something differently, this gives you an opportunity to uh, restart and be ready to go back to whatever it is that you're doing. So what are some of the things that you can do? 
you can pursue a new hobby or interest that you only need to do maybe 30 minutes or one hour if not every day maybe every week or once a month or every two weeks up to you as long as you find a new hobby so what is that um new hobby like for me uh, started in may i started my podcast so i established my youtube channel and this is what i'm doing now i've also um managed to upload some music videos that i haven't been able to do before which i was uh, you know very fortunate to have the opportunity to collab with my friends or even my my daughter so attend to that activity or plan that you have been postponing for example I, I see a lot of um, my friends online that are collecting plants now, buying plants, raising plants, selling plants. It seems to be the current craze at the moment, which is attending to your plants. So I have a lot of plants which I inherited from my mom. My mom is, was the green thumb or was the person that loved gardening. I've never ever loved gardening in my entire life. I appreciate plants, but I don't actually do the gardening. But I think I need to pay attention to them now because the person who owns those plants have passed away so somebody else needs to look after it uh, for example you've been may um you've been planning to make that kilt or that dress so going on uh, a sewing uh, hobby if you haven't done that before now is probably a good time to do that especially if you have a sewing machine that's just gathering dust um, at home maybe it's time to wipe it down and and check it and see if it's still working or maybe because of all those youtube videos that you've been watching about several dishes why don't you try cooking a particular dish dish which i've also tried to do so that uh, took me uh, some time to learn some of the things that i love to eat that my mom used to cook but no one's gonna cook that now so i'm just doing it to satisfy my own cravings or maybe it's now time to dye the hair that's slowly do, going gray so whatever it is whether it's a new hobby or interest or whether it's something that you have thought about doing before but never had the opportunity to do for example read a book that you've never been able to read for the longest time okay so take time to do that it's it's part of um, juggling your busy work and home life try to push out of that situation and and do something differently for yourself so I think those are the, the things that will um, really help us to manage our busy work and home life. Okay, so because um, I've given you the top five tips from uh, my episode with Sydney Villegas and I've kind of condensed it and presented it to you now as a kind of like a complete package, I hope you learned something new or even if you didn't learn anything new, at least you've been reviewed today in terms of what you can do, what is manageable, what is appropriate to your situation. And um, the most important thing is there's always something that we can learn from the experiences of others. So if you find yourself still struggling, I hope that maybe taking one or two of the tips that were mentioned today um, help you in terms of you know putting everything under control samusari is a member of the gorilla podcast syndicate you can also reach out to me by the dino social facebook page or through my twitter account and of course i'm in youtube so you're watching this through youtube please do not forget to like and subscribe to samusari conversations with mimi and to the other shows of the Gorilla Podcast Syndicate. And just to let you guys know that our podcast is also available by Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Castro, CastBox, and many, many, many more. So thank you, Gorilla Podcast Syndicate, for helping me spread the word. Again, this is your host, Mimi Laurelia, saying goodbye for now and hope you enjoyed our episode. See you in our next conversation. Bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.